Hi everyone, this is Quibus, and today I'm going to show you a video on delay analysis. Now, having the ability to analyze a delay is one of the most important skills for not only engineers and principal agents, but also for contractors in order for them to compile a claim that is well substantiated and properly submitted. Uh, there are two ways of analyzing delay. The first one is prospective analysis. And the second one is retrospective analysis. So prospective analysis, that is the real time analysis of a delay. And that for me is the most important one to understand because it happens while we are in the project. So all the documentation are there, it's real time, and it just works much better than to do a retrospective analysis. So retrospective analysis, that's where guys like me make money because we go into a forensic delay analysis, which is extremely complex. And we have to make a lot of assumptions on that. We have to do a lot of modeling. So retrospective is expensive. It takes a lot of time. It's very complex. Whereas prospective is real time. And it's actually, it almost comes down to claims prevention, if I can call it that. So that's the most important one for you to understand and to apply in your company. Uh, and that's why also part of our service is exactly that. We, we save clients probably between three and 10 million on projects just by having a proper system of prospective analysis of delays so that they can submit claims and substantiate them properly. And the same skill applies, as I mentioned, to engineers and principal agents who need to adjudicate those claims. So even for them, they need to understand the method of analysis that can be applied. So in this video today, what we're going to do is I'm going to run you through a very practical example of how you can do prospective delay analysis on your project in MS project. All right, everyone, let's dive into the exercise. So what I've got here is just a, a theoretical program or a schedule on a pipeline project, which is quite simple. And let's say the scenario that we have is right here at change 600 to 800. Let's say at about six, 610. We've got a team that goes ahead and they scan for services. And let's say they found a service at change 610, a water line or a telephone line, something running across our trench. And now the engineer has issued an instruction for work to continue up to change 600 and then stop. First, we have to excavate that service, then cast it in, encase it in concrete, and only then can we excavate the remainder of that uh, section, or can we actually start excavating this the pipe trench there, activity 32. So the first step in prospective analysis is to update the program, update your schedule, to as close as possible to the circumstance giving rise to the claim so in this instance let's say that instruction was given on the 28th of january in this project's timeline so it means we're going to have to update as close as possible to that and let's assume this project is updated every month so the first month is now passed and we're going to update it at 31 january 2019 which is the date of this project so here I've implemented that step and it's a very, very important step. You'll, you'll sometimes hear a lot of, well, engineers or principal agents say, look, the contractor does not have a claim because he or she was delayed on their own terms at that point in the contract. And it's very important. That's why we do this step is to show the principal agent or the engineer that this was the delay or the status of the job at the time of the circumstance. So we are not, as a contractor, you cannot run away from those delays. But as a principal agent or engineer, you have to accept that just because the contractor was delayed, it doesn't take away his or her entitlement to claim. So we have to calculate the delay at the time. We have to, uh, you know, put a value to that. We can't just say, well, you were delayed in any case. We have to say, this is the amount of delay because there might be now an, a follow-on delay due to the instruction that's been issued. So that's why this first step is very important. And you'll see if I do that and I open up my total Slack column here, uh, 
we build in a bit of a method just to to get to a minus so i can see i am four days behind now if i'm the contractor here and let's assume for the sake of the exercise that's my own fault so that four days can you see it, it won't go away when i start analyzing my delay on the instruction now i will have to take you know responsibility for the four days and it's already established that at this point in the contract i was four days behind schedule so we don't throw that away we have to bring that into our analysis so that's step one do a proper update step two let's now insert the tasks that pertains to the delay that we have suffered into our network into the, the the chain of activities and that's something if you look at the red line over here that's my status date 31st of jan and everything's updated up to there and obviously we cannot start now with this excavation before we execute this instruction all right so what i'll do here and there's obviously a few methods that you can apply i'm going to show you what i do you are more than welcome to use a different you know place your activities on different uh, planes or put it right at the end wherever you like so what i'll do is i'll put in a new summary task over here and i'll call this let's say instruction 001 delay impact and then i'll put in another summary or well, i'll just put in a few tasks here quickly and then let's do another summary there that i'm just going to move back uh, which will simply be the remainder of pipe section so as i said guys you can uh, definitely do it differently for me this is just the way that i like to structure it all right something like that so in other words below the summary of the section i will now include an instruction and i'll have the remainder of my work set there you can also have this on a separate level at the, right at the bottom of your schedule if you want no problem with that right so now i'll simply insert as much information as possible about this whole instruction so the first thing i'll do is i'll put in the instruction date let's say instruction issued on 28 And I'll just make that a, a milestone for now. All right, and then I'll say something like order for concrete placed on a particular date. Let's say it was, it just happened on the same day and then let's do something like a lead time allowance on concrete delivery and let's say that's going to be five days and again guys these things must all be substantiated by documentation so i'll typically have a letter here from the concrete supplier with the order placement date showing the lead time you know uh, showing that we are trying our best to mitigate the impact of the delay so you can't sit back and just allow the delay to take place you have to act and everything needs to be reasonable next up i'll put in something like excavate full service and let's say this is going to take two days we have to excavate by hand and this can start kind of immediately if you can't start that immediately if you have to wait for labor or whatever to get there i will insert that as a task as well so i'll say mobilization of labor i can only have people there on date x in this instance let's say we could do it immediately so i could start on that uh, the day uh, the same day to start excavating that service and then i need to cast the concrete or let's say encase the service encase the service in concrete And let's say that'll take one day and then lastly let's just backfill backfill and compact one day well and now let's link so once we need to excavate before we can encase we need to concrete delivery there and then we need to backfill and compact right and you can put in again if you need to test that if you need some sign of put everything in as much information as possible so that we have a 
network or a chain of events or taking place that accurately describes the delay that took place. So that's step two for us, finished. Step three is now to link this sequence of events into the successor network. So, and there we have to ask the question, what one or two or three activities cannot start until we finished this work, until we finished backfilling? And the answer is it's this excavation for pi. Right. Um, so let's assume again, in, I don't want to complicate, overcomplicate the example. Let's say we cannot start with the excavation before we backfill. Right. We have to finish everything and the engineer needs to sign it off before we can continue. That was the instruction. So then I'll link those two activities with each other. And immediately that now becomes the new impact of my delay. And then you can see I've got eight days of delay now. And the impact of this instruction in isolation now becomes quite simple. Obviously, I can't claim the full eight days. Do you agree? Because I myself was delayed by four days due to my own production problems prior to this instruction. And that's why I can you see that first step is so important. So I, in this instance, this instruction has caused an additional four days of delay. And a little trick that I did that I didn't show you now, but it's good practice, was after the update, I set a new baseline. Uh, well, an additional, let's call it an additional baseline, so that I can track this delay against the previous update. So I've got two baselines here. So baseline one, you'll see if I, if I open that up, uh, it shows me where everything should have been. And the movement off of that, if I look at my baseline, initial baseline, you can see there it was actually way back. So that was the first delay that was my own. And then the second delay of the baseline is now caused by the instruction. So the fourth step, guys, will simply be to isolate this. And uh, for me, the way I would do it is I'll simply add in, insert a text column. Let's use text two, and then I will simply refer to this as the impact instruction 001, or whatever you like, and this will be to isolate that. And what you can perhaps also do is just isolate your total slack over here. Something like that. And I'll just mark this down right up to the end. And also my project completion date. And this becomes an easy filter for me to just show the, the impact of this instruction. That the fact that it impacted on my critical path through the project and that it moves that completion date now the question might be asked okay what about your four days so you can either show that in terms of a finished variance so let me just undo my filter here so you might open up the finished variance to show that and say right up to the, the status date there was a four day finished variance in my activities which means this was my own delays and then it jumps after the instruction to eight days. And that's the difference. So we are only claiming four days. And the other four days are still at the contractor's risk. Or you can just do two snapshots. So do a snapshot of status date before the instruction. And do a snapshot afterwards to show the difference in impact. The one was minus four days. We are now at minus eight days. And that's where we, that's why we claim four days for this claim. So this makes it easy for engineers and principal agents as well. Because what you effectively do is you force them to go and have a look at the logic and reasonableness of the assumptions that you made in your claim over here. So they can simply check the date and say, yes, that's correct. The instruction was issued. They can see whether you acted reasonably by ordering it, you know, um, at, in time. So if you, for instance, order only a month later, then obviously that month they would say, guys, you can't claim for that. It could have only taken you a day or two. Uh, we can reasonably allow you two days for that order to be placed. 
Then the same with lead time, so they can evaluate that and say whether it's reasonable, whether it makes sense, do you have documentation to prove it. Excavate, is that a reasonable time? Yes or no. Encasing, is that reasonable? And lastly, they can check your link and say, is that reasonable or not? So it almost creates a tick list for the engineer or the architect to check and to say, yes, this is a reasonable claim or no, I would say this could actually have, you could actually have started the excavation a bit earlier if that is the case. So at least now we can look at facts and the contractor and the engineer can sit around a table and discuss factual based claims. And now you can also see the advantage of this prospective method. Uh, it is in the moment and we can, again, we are close enough to this information to get the documents that we need. To do this retrospectively becomes difficult and expensive. Right, I hope you guys learned something. I hope you can apply this in your projects. Um, please subscribe uh, down below. We've got a lot of videos like this and it's, it's practical advice that we want to share with our contractor and professional construction, professional community. And I'll see you guys in the next video.